Hi there, Diane Dean here. Today I'm going to work on a new project. You can either follow along as you would if you were in a workshop, or you can watch me demo um, and then watch it again to uh, try to work through the steps yourself. The piece I'm going to be working on is similar to this piece that you can see hanging on the wall behind me. It's going to be a bit larger and it's going to be more muted colors. It's an abstract work and I'll do a lot of scraping and then I'll paint in some semi-representational objects. So the first step in the process for this painting is to do an area that will kind of represent the sky. And for that I'm using golden fluid acrylics. I've got a divided styrofoam plate and I've just squeezed out a little bit of this fluid. I'm actually going to thin it a bit with some water. I've got a bowl of water here and I've got a flat brush. So this will be the first application. Then I'll move on to the next step where I will be applying some very heavy bodied paints. I've got two cameras working here, so I'll be able to talk to you and um, show you my various tools and things in this direction. And then I've got an overhead camera, so you'll be able to see close up of what I'm doing on the screen. So first I'm gonna dip my brush and just really get the top of my canvas. I'm working on a 30 by 40 inch gallery wrap canvas here and my painting is going to go all the way around the outside. I'm just really going to do kind of a wet and wet watercolor technique where I apply a thin wash of my uh, ultramarine blue across the top. And then I'm going to work my way down. I want a section that will be my horizon that will be a bit darker. So I'm going to make sure I lay in a lot of the fluid here. I really like the golden fluids. They're um, very rich with pigments. They flow nicely on the canvas. There are other products available, um, but I just always find that the better products you use, the better your results are. So I just really want a bit of a graduated feel up here. I do a lot of drips in my work, so now I'm really just using the uh, water. So I'm just brushing in some water. There is some blue pigment simply because I've been dipping my brush in it, but that's going to give me the kind of sky effect that I want. It's sort of a mm, hazy day, a wee bit cloudy. I want to make sure I leave a lot of this darker blue along the horizon line. Okay, so that's working for me. I may go back in and do a little more um, wiping in there, but for the time being, that will work for my sky. I'll need to let the top part of that dry for a few minutes. Then the next step will be to begin on the bottom of the painting. One of the things I do on my easels when I start to work on the bottom part of the painting is I move my canvas so that it's off the edge. I've got a, I've got a textured uh, piece of material that's adhered to my trim strip down here so that my canvas won't slip off when I'm working on it, but I want to be able to paint all the way off the edge. So that's how I achieve that. Next I'm going to be working with some heavy bodied acrylic. Um, I am going to use both heavy bodied and then the flow acrylics. My heavy bodied are from Utrecht and these flow acrylics, which are a little thinner, are actually from Michaels. I really like the Utrecht brand heavy bodied and I find they work really well for my process. I'm starting with just white. So I'm going to begin applying and scraping. You can even see how just those water tracks have left a little bit of a texture for me so that my paints don't stick as well. Um, a lot of working with these different materials is learning how much paint to have on the palette knife to get to know the products that you use. And when you find something that really works well for you, you pretty much stick with it. So I'm gonna just keep scraping in with the white for a while. And I'm using a very light touch. Um, I scrape my paint up with the back of my palette knife. I like the edge to be fairly clean, especially when I'm starting right up here. And then I really go lightly. So I'm not trying to spread it real smooth. I'm really looking for it to kind of play with those wet spots and 
not cover everything perfectly. So you can see how I'm starting to get some texture on the canvas. And I'll probably stop and take a close up with my camera just so you can see this at this point. I'll go ahead and stop and do that right now so you can really see what I'm talking about. Smoothing some of it out a little bit, which is a kind of a knockdown technique. So let me get my camera, take a quick picture. So what you should be able to see in this picture is the way the paint is really resisting where the wet streaks are. And in fact, I'll do a little close-up video here just so you can see. So you can see where the paint is resisting attaching where the canvas was a bit wet. And I'm already getting some really interesting texture. I haven't even added any more color to the bottom of this painting. And it already has kind of a, an interesting look going to it. So far I've used two colors. I've used my ultramarine fluid and my heavy bodied whites. Now I'm going to add some of my ultramarine right to my palette of my heavy body. And I'm going to throw in some Indian yellow. If I can get it out of the jar, might be time for a new one. Let me pop off the lid here and see what's going on. There we go. It's a little stubborn because it's getting near the end. The palette knives that I'll be using, I'm going to use the larger ones. They're sort of the pie slice shaped palette knives. I've got a medium sized and a large one. And these are the only tools I'm going to be using to do this whole entire painting. So now I've got a couple of colors on my palette. I've got the blue and the yellow. And what I really want is to end up with some green. I never blend the colors all the way through. I always want my colors to really be uneven and just kind of let them let them do their own thing. So this piece is coming along. I'm going to just keep applying. I've got a little more yellow in this one, this loaded palette. I have a little more yellow. Get it a little darker. And I'm just going to keep working this until I feel like it's starting to have a sense of balance and really that's what I'm looking for in these pieces that are very abstract is is there a sense of balance is there a sense of some form of definition not necessarily defining a scene or an object but does it give you a sense of perhaps a landscape review of the sea and my inspiration for this style of painting is actually photographs that I took in California of the Pacific uh, my sister lives in San Francisco, and she's an oil painter, and when I visit her, we go off looking for inspiration, and we found a big field of white royal wedding poppies. I had never seen them, and uh, they were actually next to a bed and breakfast, and we went in and asked the owners if they knew anything about the flowers, because they also had them in their garden, and it turned out that they were this very special poppy that they had planted years ago and they had kind of made their way all over town. So when I get to the point of working in some representation of elements, this will be the field and you'll see the poppies kind of popping up and down um, at the top. I'm going to keep working. I think at this point I want to add a little quinacridone. I'm not going to make this one any near as dark as the piece that's up on the wall there. I want this to be a whole different series of kind of mid-range values. That one there is a wee bit darker than the rest. So I'm really blending my colors along here as I go. Um, I'm also looking at where do I have really raw canvas and I have to make a decision. Do I want to make sure I fill in every stretch of canvas or do I want to leave some of it exposed? Once the piece is done, I will varnish it. 
So that will unify the sheen. So any spots that don't have paint really will blend in with the rest of the painting. All right, let's go with some quinacridone. It's one of my favorite colors. It's a very expensive golden paint, but I love the brilliance of this quinacridone um, gold. All right, we're going to slide some of this in and get it to smear a little bit. I don't want a whole lot in this piece, just a little bit. just enough to give it some contrast. And because the paints are so thick, if I scrape a little deeper, I can lift them up and lighten an area. So I'm really just kind of going with how it feels. And I'm going very lightly so my palette knife just really skims over the surface. I don't want to be digging flattening, blending. I just want it to skim. And I'm okay with some pretty dark stuff. In fact, I kind of like that. I may go with a little more dark at the top and a little more blended at the bottom. So I'm going to just keep working it. And I also don't want to see the tip of the palette knife ever creating a shape. I don't like these edges here, so I always look for any straight lines where it looks like I stop my motion and I kind of smooth over those again. Let's get some more of that really nice dark quin right up at the top. I like that. So now what I want to do is I want to scrape in some clouds. Um, I need to go ever so slightly so I'll have more of that same texture. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of water and I want these clouds, and you'll notice I'm going from right to left, I want these clouds to be kind of drippy and actually run into what I've done at the bottom. Way too much paint. Clouds will have to work in a little bit more. up and down and I'm only going from left to right. So we're getting there. Don't want to do much but just slightly intersect with my move at the bottom. Alright. Again I'm looking at a sense of balance and flow. I'm going to come in with my bottle of water and I'm going to start squirting. I don't want this to work its way through. Get my smaller palette knife has got a few sections that are really kind of thick. So I'm going to move those around a little bit. That'll help disperse the paint. color drips. Good thing I did check my level because these drips are going to stand out pretty good. The white kind of runs through those paths where the drips ran through before, which is interesting. I'll make sure it picks up some more color and I get some drips as we go down. Coming along. One of the things that I always watch for is I want all of my drips to go all the way down. So if I have a drip that stops somewhere, I might have to help it along with a little more water. But if I go with too much water, I'll wash the drip right off of the painting. So now we get to this really exciting part where I'm sort of studying the drips. Here's one that stuck. We'll give him a little drop of water that moved him along. Um, I'll use something a little darker over here. Okay, the drips are moving. We'll keep an eye on those. I'm 
going to just work my white surfaces a little bit more where I see some lumps. Now the paint's pretty wet, so I could really accidentally smooth something beyond what I'd be happy with. So I have to be a bit careful here. Um, everything's moving pretty good. A few stuck drips there. We will take care of those. This guy, I'll get it up high so I don't wash too much out. That guy, there he goes. This guy, watch him go. Okay, they made it pretty much all the way down. And this guy's going to make it. One more over here. Needs a little help. Even if it just blends it off a bit, I don't see that hard end of the drip. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the bottom. It's going to have to dry for a while before I can do anything more in here. So I think it's dry enough to start the next step. I'm using my heavy bodied white acrylic again and I'm going to use a little bit of quinacridone gold. So I just really want the quinacridone gold to um, get caught on the edges of the palette knife. So I'm going to dip my palette knife or scoop my palette knife and get a little white paint to start with and I think we'll be able to see it from the other camera. And for each of these elements, I'm basically going to squish in my paint with the color. The quinacridone is just really going to be on the edge. I want them to be very fluid and loose. The shapes are very irregular. And I'm just going to keep working my way across the canvas. Some of them are going to go above the horizon. Some of them will be a little bit larger. Some will be smaller. I'll just keep working it. Again, looking for a sense of balance in what I'm doing. And at some point I'm even going to do a little spraying because I want those quinacridone bases to cause some more drips to run down through the surface. So probably about now is a good time to do a little spraying. There we go. We just want it to bleed and run a little bit so they look somewhat connected to the, the bottom of the painting. So I'm just going to keep going with this process and we'll see where it takes us. So here's the finished piece. I'll be able to take some still images of it tomorrow once it's dry. So you'll be able to see all of the texture without the glare. So the final step is to apply an even coat of varnish over the entire piece. I'm going to use the Liquitex gloss medium. It's got a sheen, but not a real brilliant sheen. I'll just put some in my styrofoam bowl. I'll use an inexpensive brush, coat the whole painting. When that dries for about 24 hours, it'll be done. And the sheen over all of the paint types will be even. Hi there. So it's another day. The painting is dry. I wanted you to have a chance to see it. I'll also take a few still images and some close-ups so you can see the detail, but it's ready to go.